60 Minutes Rewind. 12 American men have walked on the moon. The last Apollo astronaut left his footprint there in December 1972. Now, a half century later, NASA is planning to send people back to the moon. The new program is called Artemis, after Apollo's mythical twin sister. And the goal is that the next footprint on the moon will be made by a woman. The astronaut who gets that assignment hasn't been chosen yet. As you're about to see, this new push to the moon has been plagued by doubts, cost overruns, and delays. But we found something else interesting when we visited NASA. The Artemis program isn't just named for a woman. It's largely being run by women. So there's no place on launch day that I would want to be but right here. Charlie Blackwell Thompson is NASA's first female launch director. And launch director copies. In a year or so, she'll give the go for launch command for the first Artemis moon rocket in historic Firing Room 1 at Kennedy Space Center, which she first visited more than 30 years ago as a college graduate interviewing for a job. It's the same room that the Apollo 11 mission was launched from, and it is the same room that we will launch the first flight of the Artemis missions. When that young woman walked in here for the first time, did you truly say to yourself, I want to do this one day? I absolutely did. My, my thought was, how do I get a seat in this room? And now you have the seat in the room. I have a pretty nice seat in this room. All the Apollo moon missions were launched atop huge Saturn V rockets. At the time, the most powerful in the world, NASA's new rocket is even more muscular. Can you put it into words how powerful this new rocket is? The core stage will have hundreds of thousands of gallons of propellant, over eight million pounds of thrust at liftoff. The most powerful rocket ever is called the Space Launch System, or SLS. In development for a decade, it has yet to fly and has only fired its four main engines once okay, we got engine, sir. in a test. It is hard work cheating gravity. Jody Singer is another female first for NASA. As the first woman to run Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama, it's been her job to build the SLS, which is designed to go to the moon and beyond. It is built for going to deep space. And right now, it's the only vehicle that exists that can carry the Orion and take what it does to be able to go to deep space. The Orion is the capsule that astronauts will ride on top of the SLS rocket. The first one is ready to go. The lunar lander is still in the concept stage, but NASA doesn't really need it until the third Artemis moon mission. Artemis 1 is about testing out this integrated vehicle, SLS with Orion. Artemis 2 is about the incorporation of the crew and preparing us for Artemis 3, where then we will go to the surface of the moon. Do you hear yourself now how cool that sounds? <laughs> it, it does sound pretty cool. Another cool piece of the Artemis plan is a space station called Gateway, meant to orbit the moon. NASA intends to use Elon Musk's company, SpaceX, to launch Gateway's components on one of its Falcon Heavy rockets. The Falcon Heavy is already flying. Its first launch sent Musk's Tesla Roadster towards Mars a couple of years ago. Yes, that really happened. Jody Singer says SpaceX is an illustration of NASA partnering with commercial launch providers. We work together, and I think working together, that is how we will be able to deliver on the Artemis program. We both bring great things on this partnership. When that partnership will actually deliver women and men to the moon is uncertain. Donald Trump set 2024 as the goal. That was seen by insiders as unrealistic. President Biden hasn't set a timetable, but his White House has given the idea of Artemis an early thumbs up. Another man and a woman to the moon, which is very exciting. What does it say about NASA that you are in these positions in what used to be 
a totally male-dominated sphere. Well, number one, I'd say we've come a long way. You know, Charlie and I, we know we've known each other for at least 20 years. We liked each other, but also we were, you know, sometimes the only women in the room. Not anymore. Charlie Blackwell Thompson says that on launch day, 30% of the engineers in what's now her firing room will be women. Have you always been interested in space when you were a little kid even? I remember the last Apollo missions, the last couple, and I can remember this sense of curiosity and awe that I could go outside and I could look up at the sky and that our astronauts were visiting the moon. The pool of 18 Artemis astronauts has already been chosen. Nine women, nine men, six of whom are test pilots, four have PhDs, three are medical doctors. It's not known yet which of them will fly to the moon, but two are in space right now on the International Space Station. Why the moon? Why put out the expense to return to the moon? We are still learning from the samples that were returned during the Apollo program. There is so much science, so much scientific discovery to come from returning to the moon. Scientists are especially tantalized by recent evidence that there's a lot of ice near the moon's south pole. That's exactly where Artemis is meant to land. Ice means H2O, which means water to sustain life and hydrogen and oxygen to potentially turn into rocket fuel. I would point to the moon being a proven ground, a waypoint for us to learn how to live in deep space when we're only days from home versus months or years for destinations like Mars. And it will be great when we go back. And we especially will be great if we this time can stay. Lori Garver was the number two official at NASA during much of the Obama administration. She wants America back on the moon, but believes the current approach is the wrong way to get there. I would not have recommended the government build a $27 billion rocket when the private sector is building rockets nearly as large for no cost to the taxpayer. She's talking about rockets like Elon Musk's Falcon Heavy. Garver was an early advocate of turning all the development of big new rockets over to private companies like SpaceX. But the Congress had a different goal. Their goal was really to extend the contracts and jobs in their districts. At the time, 2010, the space shuttle was about to be grounded. Touchdown. And members of Congress feared that aerospace jobs in their districts would go away too. The SLS, the Space Launch System, is mockingly referred to as the Senate Launch System. Can you explain to us why it's got that nickname? In this case, it was the Senate who came to us at NASA and said, no, we don't like your plan, and we are going to make you build it this way. So Boeing, prime contractor for the space shuttle and longtime NASA partner, became the prime contractor for the SLS. The industry said they would do it for $6 billion in six years. That was the rocket. It's been 20 billion in 11 years. NASA's Jody Singer acknowledges the delays and cost overruns, but insists it's the right model. The Space Launch System, I'm proud to say, has work that's over 45 states and over 1,100 vendors. So the Space Launch System is a national vehicle. That means jobs. That means that across the nation for the SLS alone, there's over 25,000 people that have jobs. It's ironic, honestly, that NASA, the very symbol of a democratic and capitalist society, um, has done a lot of its human spaceflight programs in more of a socialist way. More in a socialist way. I think many of the senators whose districts are getting these NASA jobs would balk at that description. You will plant the potatoes in March. You will build your rocket in my district. That's, that's what it is. 
The story will continue after this. The top-down approach, Garver says, has produced a NASA SLS rocket that'll cost more than $2 billion for every launch. Falcon Heavy is headed to space. While SpaceX flies its Falcon Heavy for a fraction of that. NASA's SLS can launch a heavier payload, but it's a use-it-and-lose-it rocket. None of its parts can be reused. By contrast, SpaceX booster rockets make soft landings after launch, so they can be used over and over. Two of its first stages have already been launched eight times each. Am I missing something in saying that this is the new way and what's going on with NASA is the old way? Well, I probably wouldn't characterize it as the new way and the old way. I would probably characterize it as just different ways. I would say that our rocket was designed based on proven technology. So you wouldn't say it's old, it's proven. I would say it's proven. Still, the SpaceX rockets are proven enough Godspeed, spot and dog. that NASA now trusts them to carry its astronauts to the International Space Station. Welcome to the space station. Those successful missions should not be confused with an entirely new rocket called Starship that SpaceX is testing in Texas. Three test flights so far, all three ending in spectacular explosions. The latest one just last week. So should NASA pivot and start relying on SpaceX and commercial launchers for the moon and beyond? Undoubtedly. We should have before now. Is NASA capable of making that shift? Oh, of course. I mean, NASA is capable of more than they, they realize. Now, considering all you have told me, will Congress let NASA make that shift? Probably not. For the moment, the core stage for the first Artemis mission sits in a test stand in Mississippi, the same stand used for the Apollo missions. It's awaiting a test firing after technical glitches cut the first one short. And we got to shut down. There are six American flags on the moon, one for each Apollo landing. But the newest flag there is Chinese, left last year by a robotic lander that collected samples and brought them back to Earth. Beijing eventually plans to send astronauts. Aren't we in a space race with China? There's not a race to go to the moon. We won it. We won it six times. And I have no doubt that we will be back again with people before anyone else goes. And Charlie Blackwell Thompson will be the woman to launch them from her seat in the firing room. We talk a lot about the moon, and I think the moon is phenomenal and I can't wait to go back. But when we talk about those young people that may be like me when I was younger, looking up at the night sky and looking up at the moon, I want them to look up at the night sky and not be limited to the moon. 